So, where we were? Uh, this is an interesting book, eh? very interesting. And I really, even uh, like it, it's, it's a statistical recap. So I think we, we, we've been through this thing. So do you want to, I don't know. I think um, we got through, um, I know we got through 3.2. Um, I think we had started to go through, we went quickly through the p-values and then um, I think the, at least to me, it seems like the most important thing that you wanted to focus on that I don't think we got to was the, um, the linear models. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let, let, let's uh, um, just uh, a quick look at this. Uh, uh, this is the p-value. So this was uh, the um, architectural differences between samples and so uh, making hypotheses and multiple hypotheses because um, you have a certain number of predictors uh, and everything. So the uh, comparison uh, with testing and uh, I think it's these are the it's this, it's this last piece. Right. So, yeah, the relationship between variables, uh, linear models and correlation. So, okay. So basically, um, I just um, highlighted these three things. Um, and these are examples that you can, uh, of such as uh, this type of analysis, um, obviously in uh, genomics, uh, and so the type of data that you, uh, that you use in this case. And uh, this is the model equation. Okay. So okay. we have a bigger, a bigger zero, which is the intercept. Beta one uh, is the first coefficient that we are going to estimate, and the x is the predictor, and the epsilon is the error. So basically, this um, there's some like to to, to um, actually explain what's happened is that you need to imagine that you your data are made like this. Okay. okay, but you don't know, you don't know this value, and you don't know this value. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't even know this, but uh, just leave that um, on the side because we can retrieve the value after we have estimated the, our um, uh, response. So basically, you can imagine that you are uh, like trying to uh, predict or analyze um, a response variable and um, the value of this response is um, influenced by X, which is uh, a predictor. And you have that within your data. So imagine that you have a vector of y and a vector of x. This is okay. the information that you, that you got. And um, but um, you, um, if you uh, want to like replicate y using x, you need this other uh, information that you actually cannot see, but are built in within your data. Okay. So when you apply a model for analyzing this response variable and see how, uh, how much is influenced by the predictor, um, you attempt to replicate this, um, this equation. Okay. Correct. So mm -hmm. this is why this is similar and not exactly equal. 
uh, when then at this point you apply the for example let, let's say that you use the linear model okay so you use the lm function let's say this huh? okay let's imagine that we use the lm function and this lm function what does is uh, um estimating the beta so the the bit that we we, we got inside your, our data, but we cannot see, it. and we estimate them uh, with a mathematical expression that uh, it um, retrieves this value, which are approximately uh, similar to our original data. The only difference is the error. Okay, so we have a margin of error. To be honest, okay. so to be to be to be precise. Okay, the difference between these two, okay, which are not the same, contains an error. And plus, there is another error. So the, the, there's two types of errors. Here is some entries in this, in this stuff, but we have two types of errors. A, a type of error that cannot be uh, eliminated, okay? And another type of error that can be reduced as much as possible with adjusting the model, okay? So for now, we are just talking about this epsilon error, okay? Okay. So this is this is the case when we've got um, we use just one predictor for estimating our response variable, but in genomics, most importantly, we have a certain number of predictors. We have absolutely more than one, okay? So let's imagine that we've got two predictors, x1 and x2. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this case, we we've got uh, the intercept and two uh, um, coefficients, which uh, we are going to estimate with our model, and that will be able to explain uh, how this uh, the variation of this uh, predictors influence the response. Uh, okay. We may, yeah. Uh, uh, any questions? Yeah. So just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, so the I wish I could point um, the the beta each of those like beta one, beta two. Those are your variables that you're interested in. So for this example, it could be like just very broad example, height and weight, and then the x one and x two is the um, the predictor of like the strength of the variable yeah but yeah. Uh, the, the high and the weight huh? um let's say that it's not as uh, 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 um, maybe some cases can, can can they can be uh higher weight but let's let's imagine that they are probability okay they, 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 let's imagine that they are um uh, um uh, weight. Okay. Okay. So let's imagine that weight that um, adjusts the value of our predictors to um, be uh, closer to the original data. Okay. I'm not sure if I said it right. So it, it's correct. But if, you, if I pass it to um, here, um, so basically, they are coefficients that the uh, multiplied with our predictors and the sum of this uh, the, of uh, of this all um, is the uh, closest estimation of our response of our original okay. data. Okay. Okay. Got they it. are yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's imagine we, we got many predictors, like n number of predictors. Huh? So in genomics, mm -hmm. you're gonna have like hundreds of predictors, you know. You know? Um, right. So uh, my, uh, the, the mathematical explanation of what's happening within this function is a matrix multiplication. So you have uh, uh, a matrix of mm -hmm. predictors. So and uh, uh, it's, it's like the simple uh, uh, when you have y equals to mx. So the, the, the line, let, let's see if I can uh, um, 
use that huh? if I'm able to do it. Yeah. Okay, so let's imagine we got this situation, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a line. This this okay. line here, what is that? Is x is it's y equals to mx. Mx plus three. Yeah? So yeah. if I yeah, if I uh, this is my my beta, my m, no? Okay. Yeah. This is, this is my beta. So uh, and this is the inclination of this line. Here we don't have the intercept, but otherwise the intercept is the high, because this is the high, and it, uh, maybe is that what the thing that you were saying before. So beta zero mm -hmm. is the intercept, so the, right. the high from, from which the uh, your model line starts. Um, uh, the level uh, from, um, at which your uh, model line starts, and then the, the other beta, so beta 1, beta 2, beta n, are the mm -hmm. inclination. So it's, it's a bit difficult to represent more than one predictor um, within uh, um, uh, and so uh, visually. With characterization, you can just see things that with one predictor. Uh, it, it gives you an idea of what's happening. If you have two or more predictors, then you have uh, mm -hmm. um, no more uh, a two-dimensional visualization. You have a three-dimensional, four-dimensional visualization, and it becomes quite complicated to make a visualization and see what actually happening okay, with all the predictors. So that's why you use like. Uh, uh, principal temporal analysis to make a visualization uh, of your data when you have many predictors. For mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the mathematical um, uh, things. And so you can imagine that you now have this, this predictor and you have many predictors. So they form uh, a, a matrix. And then you have a certain uh, number of beta included the uh, the intercept. So, mm -hmm. and and then you have the average for okay. each predictor. So now, what's happening inside the LM function is uh, a mathematical uh, um, play around, basically. So you are doing this matrix multiplication. Okay, and obtain a certain number of uh, um, uh, results, um, and the average of this results will be the final uh, things that you are going to analyze and see against the original data. Then you you have the estimation of your new y, so you will do the y, the estimated y. And you uh, compare this uh, across your original uh, observed response variable level of uh, your response variable. What, what is the difference is this epsilon here, which is the error. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, you're taking, by using, if you've got multiple predictors, you're essentially just taking a multi dimensional. Uh, multiple dimensions of that and averaging them together to get a single dimension like a two two dimensional thick line you can then model to graph yeah you do that yeah. with one predictor to uh, to figure out uh, uh, what's happening with your data in case you have one predictor and if you have more okay. predictors that that won't be uh, the reality Okay, not not even uh, so. The, the reality is, you have hundreds of predictors. It's a it's a multi-dimensional visualization. So mm -hmm. uh, you use at that point techniques such as principal components, which groups your the uh, the variation of your predictors, and then you can make again uh, a two a three-dimensional visualization to see. How they behave. Okay. 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 But, yeah. Okay. So what happened? Thank you. Now, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, that's good to me as well. Uh, because to, to say the things, uh, it's, it's very important to repeat. So, um, uh, let's imagine that we've got, uh, uh, we applied our model, okay? So now we like to, to do, to uh, evaluate the performance of our model, okay? Mm -hmm. So the uh, optimum uh, level, uh, will be the minimum value of the uh, sum of squares. Okay. So um, here, uh, basically, okay, the, this is what the book said, um, and um, just mentioned it, and I've resumed it very, very roughly that the gradient descent. I think it's a, it, it, it's, um, uh, that's the job, okay? So what happened is that you pick a random starting point, so a random theta value, and then take the partial derivative of the cost function, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. so see which direction is the way to go in the cost function, then uh, take a step forward, the direction that uh, minimize the cost function, and step size uh, means uh, a parameter to choose, and, and they can be different. And then repeat and take combo. So, okay, this is not very, you know, uh, I, I will like expand a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. we go, uh, uh, back on the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And see. Uh, here we go. Yeah. It's essentially like you're just like, you're going through, you're picking the points, and then you're seeing where it, like your maximum point or your minimum, like you know, yeah, when they start. You can see it. I kind of get the visualization of it on the that cubic graph, um, where you can see like the point. I'm guessing that you want to pick is that point with the deep blue at the bottom of it, like at the bottom of BU. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is the minimum. Yeah. So this is the cost function landscape for linear regression with changes in data values. The optimization process tries to find the lowest point in this landscape by implementing a strategy for updating data values towards the lowest point in the landscape. Okay, so basically, mathematically uh, speaking, okay, to be like a bit more. Uh, get the meaning of what's happening. Um, what is it? So, uh, again, we are in this situation, okay? What's mm -hmm. happened here uh, is that we are uh, calculating the minimum value of uh, this machine. Um, so anyway, so basically we uh, calculate a line each uh, that touches the the minimum of yeah. our uh, yeah okay so um, and but you you repeat uh, this procedure a certain number of times uh, for, for uh, uh, different values. And then you take the average. And um, so uh, basically until you reach the minimum value. But here is right. not, I, I, I won't say exactly like this to be honest. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, let me, 
Okay. So this is why uh, here we have the beta one and the beta zero, and this is the cost function. So in this case, this is a, a, a three dimension, this is the dimension of visualization. And our beta is our uh, intercept. So mm -hmm. these are all the possible values of our intercept. So from, from this point on, uh, uh, always your your model line starts from here and goes uh, like like that, like that, like that. Yeah? yeah. This is the beta one, which is the inclination of this uh, mm -hmm. any of these points. So this let, let's say that this starts. Uh, um, let's see that this starts from here, okay, and you have this this, mo this model uh, line, okay. okay. So basically, this is your beta zero starting point, the eight, and the inclination of this line is your beta one. The result of uh, of the minimum because the cost function is this. Right. The minimum sum of all its uh, y i. Yeah, I did. Mm. Yeah. The minimum okay. sum of the yeah. the y. Yeah. So yeah. This is a y, uh, i. Okay. Okay. It is by so you have a certain number of predictors level. You have one predict. It's a certain. This is one predictor because you have just one beta one. But you have uh, different levels, so you test different levels, and then you choose the minimum uh, sum of square. Uh, and this yeah. happens with a, a derivation. You do a derivative, mm -hmm. partial derivative uh, uh, of the cost function. Um, so pick a, a random starting point, do a partial derivative, and then take a, a step towards the direction that minimizes the cost function, and then repeat until convert, convert, convert. Okay, this is the basis okay. of the derivative. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's let's yeah. go back to the. Um, okay, so the maximum like because so we can use the uh, the gradient descent uh, mm -hmm. and so the cost function, uh, which is the loss function approach, or we can use the maximum likelihood approach. Okay. Okay, so the maximum likelihood is like taking consideration of the probability, so which is an estimation of the uh, the, 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 the average value. Okay, so okay. we are estimating uh, the average, basically, and uh, which is uh, the uh, probability. Uh, function, we apply a probability function, uh, and suppose that is the Gaussian, um, uh, here are the Gaussian trend, and um, the larger function is the multiplication of all probabilities. Okay, okay. Instead, instead here, we, we search for the minimum of each yi squared, of the, mm -hmm. the minimum, okay. Here we do the multiplication because okay. the probability of us, yeah, yes, yeah, so almost like the complete opposite. Exactly. Not, not, not quite, but um, yeah. like instead of doing the um, taking and yeah. trying to get lower, taking and trying to get lower, this you're just multiplying all and not adding them all together but you're multiplying them all together to get 
the yeah. greatest amount. Yeah. Basically, a probability is always uh, between zero and one. So this multiplication will be uh, lower anytime you multiply another value which is lower than zero. So if you, if you, if you multiply no point no five uh, times the no point no two, the, the value that you obtain is lower. So basically, then you find again, uh, because this is the, when you multiply the probabilities, you are saying that uh, the, 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 the product area, uh, the product, um, how do you call this? Uh, uh, the pi? No, uh, that's a. Okay, so the product, uh, so uh, the, the probability of uh, y1 times the probability of y2 times the probability. So all this. Means that you are searching for a probability that um, uh, Y1 can happen or Y2 can happen or uh, Y3 can happen. Okay, so it says here when you do the sum, uh, this doesn't take consideration of the distribution, uh, the density distribution of Y. Yeah. Which is, uh, yeah. So uh, basically, it's a different approach. It says the response variable y y follows a normal distribution with this mean and variance, and uh, find the degree of the one that uh, maximizes the probability of observing all response variables in the data set given the explanatory variables and then uh, yeah so basically what happened um, is uh, this a multiplication of the probability uh, of a certain level of your response can happen okay, okay. multiply all the levels from one and okay. you, you, you have a certain number of levels. Okay. Right. This can be seen here. Mm -hmm. You have Y1, Y2, Yn. Okay, so you multiply the probability that this level can verify because you have advertised it as a normal or Gaussian trend. Uh, and so you multiply this probability to obtain the general likelihood that this, this thing can happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. what happened here that we're taking the, the log? Mm -hmm. Because um, some, somehow they may be not the, in the same scale. And this is not, uh, yeah. So, so we take the log, so as we have a more stable uh, result, and then we reverse it with an expansion. Um, it, it, uh, and you can see that this is done to show you that then, you can retrieve the cost function from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So to optimize this function, we would need to take the derivative of the function with respect to the Okay. So let's let's go forward and see that what happens here is that um, our error. Uh, can be uh, obtained uh, from the original values to our observed values and what we have estimated. Mm -hmm. Or this reverse, uh, okay. Uh, uh, and um, if you have a certain number of predictors, so a certain number of uh, um, 
error level. Again, you have another notification to, to find the result. This is what happened inside R when you apply it before. And so, just as the same as before, we have this, we have this uh, capital Y, which is a matrix that multiplies mm -hmm. uh, our MF. Okay, so these are matrices. Okay, and two, um, let's say, to uh, find X, yeah? I will need to do Y divided by M. Okay. Or, this is it's just this, or to find M, which is our beta, I will need to find Y divided by X. And how can I find this? Uh, can I do these things if I have many Y, many X? Okay. So what happened? This is this is our uh, this is our beta. Okay. That we are uh, we are estimating. Okay. okay. And um, this M. Okay. This is our mm -hmm. our coefficient. So. To find this estimation of beta, we need to do this mathematical trick. So basically, we multiply and divide for the same quantity within matrices. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So in a way that we can. So it's it's basically to, to make it short. Huh? Okay. Because um, it's basically uh, easier. To do this operation within, when you have many uh, uh, many variables, so you do this trick, and then it's uh, computationally feasible, more feasible uh, to obtain to do this. So this is a matrix, you do a matrix, but the transpose of the, the first matrix, and then you put this uh, in the back. Okay. So there are other, other, I'm not sure if you need to, to, to do that, but visually it helps you to understand what happens uh, when you attempt to estimate uh, your beta. So basically you have this uh, predictors, and they have a R of certain values, and they are many. So you put them okay. in, in a box. And you revert the box a couple of times um, in a way that you can finally directly multiply instead of. Uh, so it's it basically more complicated doing like that. So, mathematically speaking, this is the way that it turns out to be the more suitable to um, just Yeah, it just extends that to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, this is not clear to me. Uh, I mean, I, I know what, what happens here, but mm -hmm. uh, it's good that we, in, within R, you can retrieve your beta, your estimation of beta one, and your um, intercept with a, thing, with, with a, a mathematical formula, just using uh, a little formula. So I'm, I haven't done much practice with these things because I just like run the model and then I want to look at the um, yes, the uh, estimation and so do, do you have any experience in, in retrieving these values with R within R? Yeah, I, the the R is the the part that I'm comfortable about. It's the theory behind it. So like, I feel like this is the first time I'm getting exposed to like the actual theory behind it. Because before, when I've tried to do stuff like this, I just you know find a forum online that tells me to do X Y Z, and then I do it, and I get the answer I'm looking for. So I haven't gotten into the theory. So see, seeing the theory behind it, it's gonna take me. I'm probably gonna have to listen to this a few times to like really break it down to understand it but i think doing it in r it's very understandable you're just putting all the pieces together like literally just spelling out your formula 
Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening next is uh, like an, an example uh, with mm -hmm. the context data. So let's imagine that our predictor um, behave as a, a uniform distribution. So they use a random uniform uh, of 50 elements with mean um, and standard deviation or bias. Yeah. But anyway, so these elements. And um, so they set, because this is your starting point. Okay, you, you need to, to, to think that to make a synthetic, synthetic data, you assign the values, but in reality, you don't know these values. Okay, okay. this is just to, to make this uh, synthetic data in a way that you have your observed data. Okay, it's a trick to, to, to build the function. Okay, so right. you now use this bit here that you, in reality, real data, you don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. but you, you know just this, you know just the value effect of the predictors. So. And, right. the, and the value of the response. But here, for mm -hmm. the same and the synthetic data, we assign these values and then we attempt to go as much as close as possible. <laughs> to okay. This one. Okay. So we make a model, LM, uh, yep. with one predictor, and then um, maybe before that, if we could have a, a quick visualization to see if it's linear or not, and then mm -hmm. make the model. And, and so, uh, they are linear, but they all align to a linear line. And uh, let's go back to the book. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, yeah. uh, uh, what's happened here is that you then replicate this thing a certain number of times to mm -hmm. see what what is the trend of this data, because this can, can happen for a time, for a time. So it, it's not said that if you replicate your data randomly, uh, imagine that you have new data coming in uh, and, and see what is the overall trend of this data. Okay, so you replicate okay. this uh, uh, certain number of times, you do like 200 samples and see that uh, in fact, they have uh, this, this linear trend towards growing. Uh, the, 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 so the more it, it x is growing, y. Uh, so they, they are positively correlated. Right. right. Oh. And you can see how, yeah. like, in the histograms there, the distribution of where the the frequency of the um, beta knot, like where it falls for each one. Yeah. So um, uh, we can see that these are the regression coefficients that vary with every random sample. And uh, mm -hmm. okay. so now, as, I, uh, as we said, we have an estimation of y, our response with the with this, uh, with this summary of our model, and we say that the estimate of our predictor, for example, in this case, with this synthetic data, it's 2.08. Okay, so yep. that means that um, this is positively uh, increasing uh, the value of, of your uh, response. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay, uh, it is statistically significant. It is uh, the result of the uh, model says that the p value is lower than 5%. So, uh, it's actually um, statistically significant. Okay. And then you have, you have other uh, you know, information like the, the R square and the adjusted. Okay, so even mm -hmm. here there's something to say because uh, the R square is not enough. Usually it's much better to refer to the adjusted R square. This is for new data. If you are just okay. estimating your data, you can refer to the R square. But if you uh, um, think that you might have new data uh, to compare your uh, your model, then it's better for you to, to look at the adjusted R square. Okay. okay. Um, so now now that we we have our estimation for the level of the predictor that that would be. Uh, building up our uh, response, we can um, even retrieve uh, the competency interval and uh, calculate uh, the error. Okay. The residual so the difference between our observed data, response variable, the level of our observed response variable, and what we have just estimated. Okay. This is an adjustment. It depends by the number of predictors. So the, uh, this is said like the uh, response uh, ratio, uh, response to predictor, uh, predictor to outcome. It's the observed right. to uh, predictor ratio. So based on that value, on the on the radio, so if you have like the observed n, uh, your observation are greater or lower than than the, the number of predictors, this might change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So this s is our residual sum of squares. Some sum of uh, residual um, error. Okay. Yeah. Residual sum of squares. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. so basically, what what happened here that we, we can calculate the R square with this uh, with this formula. The residual sum of square and the uh, CFS. So the total sum of square. Mm -hmm. And we can even have a look at the, the, uh, the R value, which is the ratio uh, between the covariance um, uh, and the sigma. The Pearson y. correlation, right? But, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so the partial, um, uh, the, the partial um, uh, uh, standard deviations, the, the covariance on the partial standard deviations. And you can see when R square is equal to one, they are positively correlated. Um, uh, no, as the R is equal to one. When R is negative one, then negativity is correlated, and otherwise there's one. So okay. not. Uh, no. There might, yeah. there might be some some extra uh, uh, thoughts to. Uh, um, to say to, to assess about um, the correlation, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure about that. But um, then, um, 
case with F statistics, in case uh, uh, do, do you have experience using the, the F statistic? I don't do that very much. Okay. So when would you use the S statistic versus like I guess like what is the benefit of looking at the S statistic versus just R squared? Exactly. So this um if if we look at the, the formula, we can see that the the total and the residual uh it's used uh within the number of predictors and then the residual within the um so basically comparing um the results of the of the model to give you um again like a sort of uh, extra uh information about your uh model results and, and mm -hmm. theory on, on your data uh and if you if you uh, get a certain number of predictors, you must uh, assure that they are lower than the number of observations. And this is as it is genomics, it's quite complicated. That's, so uh, uh, it might uh, happen that you have uh, uh, a greater number of predictors. So mm -hmm. it might happen. Uh, and it looks like for the the categorical or variable example, it's the same process except it's a essentially like a yes or you know you're encoding it as a yes or a no, so like a zero or a one, and so you can do the same process just with the different encoding. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. on the right ring? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I think this this, uh, this example is nice because uh, you said um, basically uh, replicate the gene and then mm -hmm. make a data frame and do the model. But then, okay, yeah, this is a regression, and uh, and you can uh, you can see that they are categorical if they. Uh, like align this way, so the, your your um, your predictors are categorical. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, no. Yeah, I think this is um, as an introduction of what's happening is um, quite fine. Um, okay. Then the, the, it mentioned something about uh, to, to, something to take consideration of when you do regression and uh, like mm -hmm. cases of non reality, uh, the correlation of this uh, the variable and uh, as well as the correlation of the error sense and uh, the, the, the variance which is, can be no cost, constant and the outlier. So these are things that you know you know to go back there and uh, yeah mind them you know, when when you do yeah. right 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 um and like depending if you've got things that you know you're looking for the outliers or you know like do you try to explain those outliers of like you know if there's like biological relevance to it or is there a reason that you know, we're not really interested in those outliers and you can exclude them. So I guess, you know, you have to take those things into consideration too when you build or when you're deciding what to build. Yeah. Got it. Um, well, this was really helpful. Thank you so much. I, like I said, I'm definitely going to have to go through this again to just and work through some of the examples that they have at the end. Um, because the, the R part makes sense to me. It's the theory behind it that is totally like over my head. So I'm trying to just like break, you know, listen to this help and like just keep breaking it down some more. So thank you. Yeah, there's some, some exercises as well that are nice to 
Do you know if there's any solutions to some, somehow in the, um, on the internet about these exercises, which are, you know, you can, you can Right. The answers are on the GitHub. Yeah. Oh, okay. For the book. Yeah. Not on our GitHub, but for the book's GitHub, they've got the um the solution manual for each of the problems. Okay. Yeah. So that's Nice to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So I'll be sure to okay. work through this. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll talk to you not next week, but the week after next then. So, you know, in the US, there's a time change and everyone gets thrown off for that week. Um, so the meeting, do you, does, is there a daylight savings time in Italy? Yeah. Uh, we, it's better if we do a week off. Yeah. We, we, you know, for, for some uh, for some reason you can even that that's not big difference. So, um, but uh, but if we take a week off, so the, the very next week we be able to. Yeah. Uh, it's even yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you, Virgica. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank Have you. a nice day. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you.